Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be starting off playing some Atari 7800 games. And, uh, you know, I, I just did a video where I talked about the system and explained, you know, how, or, you know, what it's all about. And so I thought, now's the time to start actually playing some games. Um, so the first one I decided to do is Miss Pac-Man for the 7800, because I just picked this one up uh, about a week or so ago. I found it in a, in a secondhand store. And uh, it was pretty cheap. I think I paid about 10 bucks for it. A pretty good price. But uh, yeah, I've, it's been one that I've been trying to get my hands on. So I thought, let's try it. And I thought, well, since I have the Atari 2600 version of it, and it's compatible on the same system, let's compare the two and let's take a look at them. I mean, they're both really great games. So, uh, And Miss Pac-Man is a lot better than its predecessor, Pac-Man. So... Let's give this one a whirl first and see how it plays out and then I'll compare it by playing this one and let's just see the differences just for fun. I'm going to be using the um, the 7800 controller uh, just to make it authentic. You know, I could be using the actual Atari 2600 controller, but I just want to give this one a try because, you know, if I'm playing on the 7800, might as well use its controllers too. Anyways, let's start off by playing uh, Miss Pac-Man on the Atari 7800 Pro System. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start off with the Atari 2600 version. Uh, the good thing is I don't have to use an Atari 2600. I can play it on this system because it takes both 26 and 7800 games. Uh, so right off the bat, I mean, you can tell that this is this is really well done compared to, say, the original Pac-Man on the Atari. Um, it looks more like a Pac-Man game. Uh, you still got the rectangular dots instead of circles, but that's fine. I mean, I know the system did have some issues with rendering uh, things like that of detail. But, I mean, ultimately, this is actually pretty good. And you got this kind of, like, cut screen piece in the, in the title screen. Uh, I think it should have started off on this screen. Would have made more sense. And then go to the main screen, but that's okay. They're trying to mimic the arcade feel. Whenever you saw the arcade system, you'd see these little screens, uh, little cut screens and all that stuff. Let's give this game a whirl. Pretty good sound, actually. Um, and the song, the tune sounds a little bit more like a Pac-Man tune. Uh, as opposed, again, of its predecessor, the Atari 2600, or VCS, as some people like to call it. A uh, version of Pac-Man, which just was terrible. The sound, the song that they played beforehand... Ugh, didn't sound right at all. It's almost like they didn't put any effort into it. They just like made a little bit of a a noise. This one that you could tell they spent some time on it. It is a little bit more of a simpler game too, compared to some of the other Pac-Man games. But they did a good job. I mean, this 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 does definitely make up for the uh, for what they they gave us in the first place. Just shows that the system was capable of doing a lot more than what you know some of the earlier games. And I'm, I mean, I don't under, like I'm not going to knock it or anything and say that uh, you know it was a poor job. It could have been a number of reasons why. I mean, the cart space, the cart size of them uh, was a was a factor. They had to keep the costs down. Uh, the time it, that they had to actually, you know, create these games, they didn't get a lot of time because it's all, you know, money. Time is money. So I'm sure they had, they were under pressure to get these games done quickly, on budget, with the minimal amount of space to fit on the cartridges. So this was a little bit of a later on release. I mean, I don't mind the original Pac-Man. It's not that bad, but compared to this, this is leaps and bounds. <laughs> and we got this uh, other level. It's a blue kind of board. Uh, different maze, which is great. Changes things up so you don't feel like you're just playing on the same screen the whole time. Kind of adds a little bit of flavor to the game. Problem is, it's blue, so when the uh, ghosts go blue after you get the power pellets... Oh, I just got cornered there. Um, they almost blend in, so they kind of disappear. 
That'll just be my TV settings. I was playing around with the uh, sharpness and tint and all that stuff before I started. So, I was trying to get a sharper image as, as best as I could. You know, that's the thing with these old TVs. After a while, they just start to look like crap. Really been considering getting a smaller flat screen TV to try some of these games out on. It's just not the same, though. I mean, these games were designed to be played on these CRT TVs, so it makes sense to play them on them. Overall, not a bad version of Pac-Man. Well, this Pac-Man, anyway. Dot Goblin Game! But this is actually pretty good. I kind of like it. Hey, the pretzel! Can you give me a pretzel? And a free man! Ah! Uh. Anyways, let's fire up the 7800 version and see how that looks. Okay, so we get the Atari cut screen. Um, that was common, I guess, for a lot of the actual 7800 games. So you get that Atari, that nice Atari screen. You won't get those with the 70 or the 2600 games, uh, even though you're using the same system. So this is cool. This this actually starts off with the screen showing the ghosts. Uh, you get uh, the names and everything, who the ghosts are. Starring Miss Pac-Man, copyright 1984, and you can see the board is a lot more crisp. Uh, this this is why I said in, in my other video where uh, the 7800 has almost the capabilities of the Nintendo. I mean, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. Alright. So you could tell the sound was a lot better. Uh, but, I mean, this is using the same sound chip as the 2600, so I guess they just spent a little bit more time on it. Or maybe the cartridge, uh, I don't know. I know there is a, a chip in some of the carts that uh, give it a better sound. I don't think there is in this one, though. I don't think it has that chip in it. I totally forgot the name of the chip. It's not bad. I mean, this just really does give you the arcade feel. I mean, this is this is like playing arcade Miss Pac-Man. Very similar to the... Uh, the Atari 400 this pa uh, Pac-Man game I, I did a you know a little while ago. All the sounds are there. Sounds right. They look a little bit more like you know power pellets and stuff. I mean they're still squares. I think a lot of these uh, console systems, the uh, dots end up looking like squares. I don't know in the arcade if they're more square or if they're circle. Oh, we got Act 1. Cool, cut screen. There's Pac-Man there with Miss Pac-Man. Now we're on the board, the blue board. Again, the, the maze changes up to give you a little bit more of a, you know, more of a Pac-Man feel. I don't know. There we go. The uh, power pellets, though, whoa, whoa. The power pellets don't last too long, so you really got to be quick. I think I mentioned this in my other, uh, my first Pac-Man video for the uh, Atari seventy or the Atari four hundred. I mean, that usually when I get the power pellets, I just use it as a strategy to make sure I can get the rest of the dots. I don't use it, like some people will use it to go after the ghosts and try and accumulate as many points. It's just, I don't know, it's just the way I always play, I just try to complete as many boards as possible. And I find using the power pellets to make sure I got a safe path, as opposed to going after the ghosts. Unless you're playing the game Pack Pod on the, in the arcades, which is all about winning tickets probably want to go after the ghosts because you get more more uh, high score then you get more tickets if you play those type of things Let's see if I can do it whoa oh that was close I literally just got the last dot in front of the ghost 
game feels like it's getting faster, I don't know why. Maybe the ghosts are moving faster. It's actually pretty tough. I mean, how many levels in? Like cherry, strawberry, is that an orange? Pretzel, apple. Pretty far in. The game's starting to get really crazy. The, the speed of the game is... And of course you get to the point where the power pellets will literally only like give you enough power for a second or something. To a point where they almost don't even do anything anymore. Let's see how long this lasts. See that wasn't long for, you know, I got from there to about here before it wore off, so... They don't really save you too much anymore. You can't rely on them. A nice pathway up there. Now I'm on my own. I'm all out of power pellets. Oh jeez! Whoa! Yeah, follow me. Whew! That was intense. Alright, act two. The chase. Let's see what's going on here. Huh. They're chasing each other. And we got another board now. Cool. Went to the pair stage. So the uh, power pellet lasted a little bit longer now. I guess now that I'm on another stage, the, it's a little more forgiving. Probably wasted it there. Ooh, got them all. Oh, I, I almost got the pair. Sweet. Not doing too bad. Usually I lose by now. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh, jeez. They all got me. That's crazy. On the banana. See if I can get me a banana. I want a banana. No. I don't think I'm going to live long enough to get a banana. Yeah, let's eat them. That's the problem. When you chase after them, you're not getting any dots anymore. Oh. Cornered. Yeah, that's an okay score. 22,430. Not bad. So, these were actually both pretty good. Um, I would say both of them gave the, the real Pac-Man experience. Um, well, Miss Pac-Man experience. I keep saying Pac-Man. Um, and speaking of Pac-Man, I mean, I was referencing this one a little bit when I was talking, to, talking during this game. Um, and the reason is, I mean, this was the first one to come out on the Atari. This is what got a lot of people excited about the Atari. The fact that Pac-Man was a game you could all of a sudden play on your home console. Pac-Man was huge back then. Pac-Man was the arcade game to play. Everybody knew who Pac-Man was. Everybody wanted to play Pac-Man. And it took, like, Nintendo to create Donkey Kong as, as somewhat of a competition to, to rival it. I mean, yeah, sure, we, had, we already had Space Invaders. But people really got into Pac-Man as being like a different kind of game. And so when Atari announced they were coming out with Pac-Man and it was going to be sold at Christmas time, a lot of people got their hands on the game and, and they were like really excited and they put it in their system and they were not impressed. Um, even for the Atari standards, they were not impressed. Uh, it's not bad. It's not like it's an impossible game to play or... Uh, you know, it, it sucks so much. It's just, it's a little bit different than what you'd expect if you were wanting to, to mirror a Pac-Man game. So, this one coming out, well this, well, this was 81, I believe, uh, when this came out. And So, this one's 87. At least it says here on the cartridge, 87. So, that's a good uh, chunk of time for them to actually make it right. Um, and kind of make up for this that came out beforehand. Now, mind you, and I did bring this up as well, there was the Atari computer version of Pac-Man, which I did cover uh, in a previous video, and this was 82. So, But, I mean, that's a totally different system. The Atari 2600 and the 8-bit Atari line are completely different, so you cannot really compare them like that. Um, almost the same with this. I mean, the 7800 version. The 7800, like I said in the video prior to this one, where I was talking about the 7800, was it could have rivaled the Nintendo uh, back in the day. In fact, if it was released like it's, it was intended in 84, it would have come out just before the Nintendo hit, and uh, people would have had that experience. Um, 
probably wouldn't have the game selection like the Nintendo had. I mean, Nintendo had Mario, Super Mario Brothers and stuff like that, which, you know, the 7800 didn't have anything close to that. Now, that could just be a programming thing. That could just be, you know, you know there's a lot of reasons behind that. But we did get an excellent arcade version of uh, Miss Pac-Man and a bunch of other ports, which I will be playing uh, eventually on the channel. You know, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. and all that stuff. I've probably played some of them during some of my other comparison videos. Um, but this was fun. I mean, I really enjoyed playing both these versions of Miss Pac-Man. It didn't feel like they were too far off from each other. Sure, the graphics were a little bit, you know, sharper on this one. And the levels were a little bit more, uh, you know, ironed out and, and just m much tougher. I felt that this one was a lot harder, obviously, than this one. Um, but b being that it's a 2600 game, you know, you're not going to put too much pressure on it. To be to be better so this is actually a pretty decent one i'm glad i got to pick it up i mean i was thinking about it for a while it was one of the ones i didn't have there's still a few games for the uh, system i don't have that i might try and pick up problem is that uh, some of the more obscure ones are a lot more expensive so finding them and and uh, paying the amount of money for them are two different things Anyways, let me know what you think of Miss Pac-Man on the 7800 and Miss Pac-Man on the 2600. Did you play them when you were younger? Did you play them now? Which one do you like better? Do you prefer one? And uh, yeah, just throw it down there, even if you want to talk about the uh, the 400 Pac-Man version. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe to my channel. Talk to you later.